during one of the very few panels about technology that took place at the World Economic Forum this year, the moderator asked the panel if there is a particular model that can predict the evolution of artificial intelligence. The moderator brought up a model that was at the center of a conversation at Davos with a group of fellow techies, to use his terms. This is what he asked the panel to confirm. So, let me ask you a question about the evolution of AI, which I think maybe all of you might have an answer on, which uh, I was at the at Barry's panel bar the other night, the sort of the techies gathering and got in a long conversation about AI with a bunch of people. And one of the theories that came out of it was that AI evolves in a series of S's. So you have machine learning, you have deep learning, you have GANs, you know, you have, you know, um, and then you have you know, large language models. And each of these advances makes a big splash and then it levels off and then it improves. But what happens is that you have different models of AI that make a splash kind of every year. And so if you believe that, then right now the proper thing, if you're trying to think about the future of AI, is not to infinitely extrapolate on large language models, but is to try to identify what is next. Is that a fair way to talk about the evolution of AI? In general, the panel agree with the view, and they also gave a glimpse of what to expect for the future. I believe absolutely. I mean, because you mentioned the four that have already been adopted, but then you can get into neurosymbolic, you can get into how do you include knowledge inside AI, which is today not. It's just blindly looking at data. All of these are yet to come, and I believe they will come. I mean, the word that is often talked about is neurosymbolic or reasoning, and we are far away from that in any of these four. So will all of these be worked on? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad you I'd look at it something different, though, Nick, is Please. that that's the right answer in terms of the actual technology advancements. But then it's only that it needs to be put to use at scale. And what you see with technology a lot is it's gradual and then sudden. Right? And we're still in the gradual phase right now, and a big part of it is not the capabilities of the technology, but going back to your first topic, the people. Right? Right. And so you know, when we think about the use cases we were just talking about, whether it's with chips and being at the edge or you know, 5G, the biggest issue is not the technology. Right? It's that in the factory, every factory is run by a general manager. Um, they're not thought about as platforms. It's very hard to do the change management, and you're still convincing people uh, that you need to use not just your data, but other data, right? And so while that's an interesting way to think about the technology, the focus has to be, which is part of, a big part of what we do, is how do you get the adoption? Right. And that's what we're working on in many of these cases when you think about the big, meta trend, big mega trends, you know, whether it's metaverse or cloud or AI, it's adoption. We agree with this view also, but only because Expo Vista TV attended an event in the past where this model was explained more effectively in a different context. The explanation comes from a keynote during an online event about microprocessors. Paul Safo is a professor at Stanford University as well as a forecaster specialized in long-term technology trends and their impact on society. Phenomena that show a steep growth curve, similar to an S-curve, are often referred to as exponentials. In the digital domain, the Moore's Law is probably the most popular example of an exponential, but is not the only one. That most famous exponential in all of human history, Moore's Law. And Moore's Law is a marvelous phenomena. It's gone broadly into the public consciousness. Exponentials are everywhere around us. They absolutely surround us. And because people have become so fascinated, so transfixed by Moore's Law, they ignore the fact that we're surrounded by exponentials. But there's a whole other class of exponentials in our lives, and that's the exponential challenges, some of which are very old challenges, and others are the consequence of new technological innovations. An obvious exponential challenge is revealed in this chart of global population growth. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to look at this chart and say, gee, this trend will not continue indefinitely. You are here, way off in the upper right corner of this chart. And the question is, over the next 50 years, what challenges will this exponential growth present to us? Most of what we talk about as exponential curves are not exponentials at all, but they are exponential phase of something else. 
and that something else is a logistic curve, the S-curve. What we call exponential curves are just the exponential phase of Pierre-Francois Verhulst's logistics curve, the classic S-curve. And even the exponential growth in the semiconductor industry, if we look at it closely, is created by interlaced S-curves of succeeding technologies. The classic example of the S-curve was published by Raymond Pearl way back in 1925 in the biology of population growth. The logistic curve has a specific point where a sudden change takes place. People tend to call this point the inflection point, but the correct name should be takeoff point. The inflection point is at the midpoint on the logistic curve. Before the inflection point is a period of constant acceleration. After the inflection point, where the growth factor drops below one, that's constant deceleration. And the way I think of this, in fact, is actually these are two separate curves separated by an inflection point. There's the exponential curve, the moment of progressive acceleration, and then on the other side, when the growth factor drops to one, is the logistic element of the curve, progressive deceleration. So keep that in mind. A really important job as members of the semiconductor industry is to help people understand that exponential curves are logistics curves. The confusion is not just about exponentials and logistic curve. Towards the end of the session in the same panel at the World Economic Forum, the speakers forgot about the S-curve and talked instead about the tipping point. So I'm, a, I run, I'm the CEO of a company called the Future Today Institute. We do long-range scenario planning and we just focus on technology. So the question that I get asked a lot is, when is the tipping point for uh, quantum? Um, at one point it was big data. When do we need to know about big data? digital transformation, um, you know, and, uh, and artificial intelligence and artificial general intelligence. And my answer is, we don't, uh, I don't know. Um, and the answer, when does the tipping point hit? The reason that the business community wants an answer to that question is because they need to roll, they need to know when the investment has to happen. The difference between fusion and quantum is that we have the real quantum computers. So that was a tipping point that happened four or five years ago. Now we're using real quantum computers. Where when it comes to fusion, they're not really they don't have the fusion reaction. Ping point has different meaning depending on the context it is used, but it is normally applied to any process in which, beyond a certain point, the rate of the process increases dramatically. The term was also popularized in applications to daily life by Malcolm Gladwell's 2000 best-selling book, The Tipping Point how little things can make a big difference.